welcome to Gurukuli School. I am Nikita Acharya and in today's video I will be talking to you about measurement of mass and time. Now these are relatively easy topics so quickly let's begin with the first one that is measurement of mass. Mass is a basic property of matter. What it means is that mass of a body does not vary when measured by different methods or at different places. Because mass is basically the amount of matter present in the body, right? So it doesn't matter if you measure the mass of a substance on earth or on moon. It remains the same. The weight changes, yes, because weight depends on the small value of small g, right? That is acceleration due to gravity. And that is different for different heavenly bodies, but mass is basis, so it will not change. Second, you already know the SI unit of mass, that is kilograms. But like we saw in the case of length in the previous video, mass of various objects in the universe are spread over a range of orders. So maybe for higher masses we can still use kilograms, but for the lower range it becomes very difficult to measure mass in terms of kilogram. And so we have a different unit, which brings us to the third point that is unified atomic mass unit for measuring masses of very small particles like atoms and molecules. We will discuss more about this later in the video. First, let's take a look at the instruments and methods that we generally use to measure different kinds of masses in the universe. The first one is a very basic instrument, that is the common balance. You would have seen this one with uh, various vendors and in shops also. For laboratory purposes, we have a variety of this balance known as the chemical balance that we use to measure different chemicals. And since these instruments need to be precise for the sake of chemical reaction, the balance, as you can see, is actually enclosed inside a box so that there is no disturbance due to air or sound vibrations. But if we want to measure very heavy objects, we cannot use these balances, right? Let's say, for example, like the mass of Earth or Moon or Sun. So for these kind of measurements, we make use of Newton's law of gravitation. How? Let's see. According to Newton's law of gravitation, any two objects in the universe will attract each other. With how much force? With a force that is proportional directly to the product of their masses and inversely to the square of distance between them. So here, if you know the mass m1 and you know the force f and you know the distance using maybe parallax method like we discussed earlier, since capital G is constant, you can easily find M2, right? But on the other hand, if you want to measure something very small, let's say the mass of some charged particles, like electrons maybe, we use a device called as mass spectrograph. And this technique is also sometimes referred to as mass spectrometry. What happens there is that we use a deflecting field. And this field is produced by a combination of electric pole pieces and magnets, as you can see here. And because of this, see here the diagram of mass spectrograph, particles with different masses get deflected or they change their path by different angles. So basically this technique is used to separate say impurities in a chemi chemical sample. But you can also use it to find the different isotopes of a particular element. And what are isotopes? Same element, different masses. Now, as promised, let's get back to atomic mass unit or is it you, uh, you can simply refer it to as small u. Atomic mass unit is a unit of measurement to be precise, usually used to measure the mass of different elements. One u or one atomic mass unit is taken as one twelfth the mass of one carbon 12 atom. Carbon 12 means 12 is the mass number, number of protons and neutrons. And this mass, whose one twelfth we are considering, includes the mass of all the particles inside the carbon atom. This means that in addition to considering the mass of protons and neutrons inside the nucleus of the atom, we are also considering the mass of electrons. Now this is important, why? Because mass of electrons is actually very small compared to mass of protons and neutrons. And because of this, most of the time, we consider the whole mass of the atom is concentrated in its nucleus. But when we are talking about a standard of measurement, such as atomic mass unit, we have to be very precise in our measurement. So 1u becomes 1 12th the mass of carbon atom, including the mass of electrons. 
So from that logic, mass of carbon 12 will be how much? 12 u. Technically, if you measure this in terms of kilograms, which is SI unit, 1 u equals 1.66 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg. See, the reason for taking this is because carbon 12 has 6 protons and 6 neutrons. And mass of electron, even though it is being considered, is actually very, very small compared to this protons and neutrons. So if I take 1 12th the mass of 12 particles, and I say that the particles are almost having same masses, that means I am basically calculating the mass of one particle. So the benefit of using carbon and expressing mass in terms of U is that for any element, if I know the number of protons and neutrons in its nucleus, I can easily estimate its mass in terms of U. See, for example, if I say helium-4, it means 4 is the mass number. That means there are 4 total number of protons and neutrons. So approximately its mass should be 4U and actually its mass is 4.0026U, which is pretty close. Similarly, for uranium-238, the mass is 238.0507U. So the masses of the element in terms of U is approximately equal to its mass number which makes it very easy. Now that we are clear about a unified atomic mass unit, let's move on to the next topic that is range of masses. Now obviously it is pretty clear that everything in the universe has different masses. We can go from mass of total observable universe. Why observable? Because we only know what we have seen. It is possible that the universe is much bigger than what we know, right? And what we have observed as the universe so far has a total mass of the order of 10 to the power 55 kg. So from here we can go as low as the mass of an electron that is of the order of 10 to the power minus 30 kgs. So here if you see we have a difference of the order of 10 to the power 85 which is actually pretty huge. And everything in the universe has a mass which lies somewhere in between these two masses. For example if you see a dust particle. It has a mass of the order of 10 to the power minus 9 kgs. A human being has a mass of order of 100 kgs. And the sun has a mass of order of 10 to the power 30 kgs. So everything lies within this range. So now we are done with length and we are also done with time uh, mass. So next we are moving on to measurement of time. Now for preci uh, precisions in measurement of time, we know that atomic standard of time is followed. How? Using an atomic clock. And how does this atomic clock work? If you remember, we discussed this during definition of one second. It works on the principle of vibration in cesium-133 atom. And these vibrations in cesium atom regulate the cesium clock. How they do that? Just like the vibrations in a balance wheel regulate an ordinary wristwatch. Or like the vibrations in quartz crystal which regulates a quartz wristwatch. And why cesium atom exactly? Why not any other? Because uncertainty of measurement in this case is of the order of 10 to the power minus 13. It means that it won't lose or gain more than 3 microseconds in one year which is actually a pretty good accuracy. And just like measurement of length and mass, time also comprises of a wide range of activities in the universe. Starting from the smallest one that is lifetime of the most unstable particle in order of 10 to the power minus 24 seconds. It goes up to as long as the age of universe that is 10 to the power 17 seconds. And every other phenomenon in the known universe takes place within this range of time intervals. May it be average human lifespan or the order of 10 to the power 9 seconds or the time taken for light to reach from moon to earth which is one second or even period of x-ray which is 10 to the power minus 19 seconds everything falls in this range of order of how much 10 to the power 41 that you can get by subtracting 10 to the power minus 24 and 10 to the power 17 seconds so now that we are done with mass and time let's quickly summarize what we have learned in today's video First, we talked about the basic of measurement of mass, uh, how it is measured using normal balances and how you use chemical balances to measure chemicals in the laboratories. Then we talked about measuring heavy masses using Newton's laws. And then we talked about light masses measurement using a mass spectrograph. We also talked about unified atomic mass unit and how you have taken 1 12th the mass of one carbon 12 atom. 
then we discuss some range of masses which varies over an order of 10 to the power 85 we also talked about measurement of time using an atomic clock cesium 133 atom and the range and order of time interval which is again 10 to the power 41 orders so that's it for today's video until the next one have a good day